In part A, we have to determine the electric field inside of the dome, and we have a picture of what the dome might look like. It's basically a spherical conductor with an excess of positive charge located on that surface. And there are two ways to calculate the electric field inside the dome. There's sort of the quick and dirty way and then the more technical way. The quick and dirty way is to recall the properties, or at least one of the properties, of an isolated conductor, which is exactly what this system or this dome is, we know that for an isolated conductor the electric field is zero everywhere inside of the conducting material, and since part A is asking us to figure out the electric field inside the dome, that would simply mean that, based on this property, that the electric field inside is equal to zero newtons per coulomb. So zero is the correct answer to part A. As mentioned, that's kind of a quick and dirty way. We can also apply Gauss's law to figure out that the electric field inside is zero. Now here we have two different definitions for a quantity known as the electric flux. We see in the first case that electric flux is equal to basically electric field multiplied by area, and then we also know that electric flux is equal to the amount of charge inside of the surface divided by a constant. What we can do is set these two equal to one another, so we can take this version of the electric flux and set it equal to the other version of the electric flux. But since part A asks us to determine the electric field inside of the dome, what we would do is look inside the dome and we would imagine a surface, they call it a Gaussian surface, which in this case would be an imaginary sphere right here, and then look inside that surface that we just drew and ask yourself, well, how much charge is actually present inside of that Gaussian surface? Hopefully you can see that the amount of charge inside that Gaussian surface is zero. So what would happen is we would take this Ea and we would set it equal to zero divided by that constant. Well, zero divided by any constant is just zero. So basically you have Ea is equal to zero, and then when you divide both sides of the equation by the surface area of that surface we drew, well, zero divided by that surface area is still zero. So basically this is a more formal way of saying that the electric field inside of the dome is equal to zero newtons per coulomb. So either way, the answer to part A is zero. But we've got other parts to answer, and in part B it asks us for the electric field at the surface of the dome. And they give us this long-winded hint. They said that use the points on the surface, or excuse me, use that the points on the surface are outside a spherically symmetric charge distribution. The total charge may be considered to be located at the center of the sphere. So that was kind of, like I said, long-winded. But basically what they're saying is we can imagine that the dome, all of the charge on the dome is concentrated at a single point right here. So all that positive charge can be accumulated right here. Our job is to figure out the electric field produced by that accumulated positive charge at a particular location. And since part B wants us to determine the electric field at the surface of the dome, well then the distance from that accumulated positive charge to the surface would simply be the radius of the dome. And the question actually tells us that the radius of the dome is one meter. So that's gonna be our distance in this calculation. And in order to calculate the electric field produced by what is essentially a point charge, remember we're assuming that all of the charge on the dome is accumulated at the center of the dome. So we can treat it as if it were a point charge and therefore we can calculate the electric field using this equation right here. So to do that, we would take a constant, the Coulomb constant, which is 8.99 times 10 to the power of nine Newton meters squared divided by Coulomb squared, that we would multiply by the magnitude of this charge. Now we go back up, we see that the magnitude of the charge was given, it's two times 10 to the negative four Coulombs. So we're gonna put two times 10 to the negative four Coulombs in for the charge and then we're going to divide by the distance squared. So the distance here in part B, as noted, was one meter, and then we'll square that. So let's pick up our calculator and figure out this electric field. We end up with an electric field of about 1.8 times 10 to the power of sixth newtons per coulomb. This would be the correct answer to part B, that is the electric field produced at the surface of the dome. Now we can go back up and look what they want here in part C. They want us to calculate the electric field at a distance of four meters from the center of the dome. So once again, we're gonna use the assumption that all of the positive charge on the dome is located at a single point, but this time the distance is a little bit bigger. Instead of going out to one meter, we're gonna go out to a distance of four meters. So you can imagine this sort of spherical surface here. 
This time this distance, which we'll still call r, is 4 meters. Basically the same calculation as part b. We can use the equation for the electric field produced by a point charge, but we're simply going to change the distance to 4 meters. So why don't we just do this? Let's just copy this setup, and then we will replace the 1 meter with a distance of 4 meters, and then this will allow us to calculate the electric field. So there we go. We'll pick up our calculators and process this calculation. When we do so, we get about 1.1 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per coulomb. That is the electric field for part C of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate that. But if not, please do not feel obligated. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.